So I have to turn, <coughs> first I have to turn the 3 into a 1. Actually, you know what? There's a better form. Let's use the forms out of the textbook. Is there any other textbook so I can copy all that st good stuff down? Nobody? You don't sleep at home. Oh, well, you shouldn't listen to me. There we go. Somebody who didn't listen to me. Thanks. What? <laughs> You make a lot of friends by carrying your textbook around. And some muscles. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to rewrite. Well, these are going to be slightly different. The difference is instead of 1, there's going to be an A there, or an A squared. So I'm going to write the three forms from the textbook right here. This is table 7-4. And it's on page 411. Oh, 411, I think that's the info number. Back before Google and whatnot. Continue over, square root. <clears throat> a squared minus u squared. Before this had a one in place of a. So there's our first. Our second is the tan inverse. So instead of 1 plus x squared, this is going to be a squared plus x squared <coughs> equals tan inverse u over a plus c. And the last one, du over u square root u squared minus a squared equals 1 over a secant inverse absolute value u over a plus c. So I recommend that you put these three on your formula page instead of the original three I wrote down. These are a little bit more general. <clears throat> so looking at this problem, uh, I'm going to rewrite it. So 3 in place of 3, I'm going to write square root 3 squared. So that's going to be a squared right there. And <clears throat> for the second term, I'm going to write it as minus 2x whole thing squared. And the form I'm using is the one directly to the right. So I'm thinking of that form and trying to put into that form. So I need to write it as a squared minus u squared. All right, so it should be pretty obvious what a is. a is square root 3. What is u? 2x. 2x. So what does du have to be? Yes. Almost. 2d, 2dx. All right, so go ahead and make this u sub in here. It should work out relatively well. <coughs> Oh, there's only one problem. I don't have a 2, so I need to get the 2 out of there. So 1 half du equals dx. So we're going to pick up extra 1 half constant. You sub? So we'll be doing, not every single integral we do is a u sub, but probably 90% of them are, I would say, somewhere in that range. Like it's pretty much, expect a u sub on most every integral we do. All right, and so you got exactly what we uh, want in that form. So this is going to equal sine inverse u over a plus c. And I'm just going to plug back in the u and the a. So 
So how do you know if uh, what you're writing down is the right answer or not? Or write antiderivative. Take the derivative. Take derivative. So this is the only one in the section we're actually going to check. So take this derivative. You're definitely going to need the chain rule. And you need to know the derivative of a, si a sine inverse. Uh, just like with every antiderivative, you get a free derivative. Works both ways. So I'll write the sine inverse x derivative is 1 over square root 1 minus x squared. So that's the derivative of sine inverse. All right, so I'll give you one minute to check if we're right or wrong. So how do I get this form into the form that I started with? It is equivalent to the original. So you take that square root 3 and multiply it inside the square root. <coughs> now, 3 is going to be 3 times 1 minus... I'm going to square this, so we got 2x squared over regular 3. So I just squared the 2x and squared the square root 3. So it's going to be 2x squared over 3. So we're going to get 3 minus 2x squared, which is 4x squared. All right. Any questions on that check? Those derivatives are a little bit of algebra at the end. We're going to be doing a lot of algebra that's going to be similar to this last step that we did right here, where we're either going to multiply a constant through or factor a constant back out. All right, that was our first problem. We'll use Go on to the next example. You are recording, right? Yeah. Yeah, we are recording. We're live. Well, not live, but live ish. All right, there's only three forms in this section, so that narrows it down quickly. Which of the three forms do we have? I can't really show them on the screen at the same time. All right, so there's our equation. So which of the three forms, they should be in your notes, which of the three forms do we have? It's not tangent because there's a square root, so it can't be the tan inverse. No chance. I think it needs to be signed because the last one has an extra u outside. So it looks like, although maybe not, it looks like the first one. So either way, we're supposed to see u squared inside the square root, no matter which of those two forms that we're using. We need to see a u squared in there. Unfortunately, so here's the term that could be u. 
or u squared. So what I just circled is u squared. Normally, we don't assign, uh, we don't say, hey, u squared is this thing. We usually say u equals uh, <clears throat> something. So how do I solve for u? Square both sides. So how do powers of powers work? Multiply or multiplying. So this 2 times a half is going to cancel out. u equals e to the x. So all I did was say, well, definitely the minus 6 is not going to be u. That's a constant. So the term was e to the 2x. And I just said, that should be u squared. So what does that mean for u? So we just figured out what u is. All right, so go ahead and follow through, figure out du, and then substitute in. So we got a problem. We're mixing x's and u's right here. So that's not good. How can I turn what's in that red circle into something with u in it? What's e to the x? u. So that's going to turn into 1 over u right there. Are there any questions on that? You don't want to mix x's and u's. So what I'm going to do on the next line is take that back out. And <clears throat> we got 1 over u du. So this du over u square root u squared minus square root 6 squared. This form is ready for our, uh, one of our inverse trig antiderivatives. So it looked like it was going to be sine inverse. Which form are we actually going to use? So it should be your secant inverse. So I'll write that form here. So go ahead and apply that form. And you can check the same way you always do by taking derivative. Maybe. You may have enough time to check. You may not. It depends on how fast you go.
Will I give you personally enough time? Well, Depends. <laughs> so you want to work on your speed so that you're not spending so much time, because there's a little bit of algebra that we had to do here, so you're not spending three or four minutes on the algebra. You want to spend 30 seconds on the algebra so you can get through the rest of it. <clears throat> All right, that was our second example. We'll jump to the third one now. This does not look like the secant inverse form, at least not quite. There's no x outside the square root. So I'm going to write down the uh, uh, sine inverse form right here. So we have our, our goal written down. So do you remember complete the square? Excellent. We're going to complete the square right here. I think every time you've seen complete the square, we've written the square term first. It's not super important the order you write them in, but I'll try to make it the most like regular complete the square as I can. So the first thing we did was factor the negative 1 out. And now we're going to complete the square, which is x minus 2 squared minus 2 squared. So there's the complete the square that I used, same th that I will always used. So now I'm distributing that negative back out. So we have plus 4, I'll leave it as 2 squared actually. Alright, any algebra questions on this? I know this is a little bit strange but we're trying to change the form all right so from here I'm going to substitute this in and I'm going to change the order around so it's 2 squared minus x minus 2 squared. The whole time I've been trying to turn into that form that I circled at the top of the board. So it's trying to turn into a number squared minus some hopefully not too complicated function of x. Our function was pretty nice, x minus 2. That's a really good u sub. So we got 2 squared minus x minus 2 squared. All right, so what is u? Use x minus 2, so compute uh, du. And a is just 2. So you should be able to finish this problem off with that information. It's exactly in the right form.
So our last problem in this uh, section <clears throat> is going to be antiderivative dx over 4x squared plus 4x plus 2. So is there any square root going on <coughs> in this denominator? So pretty much narrows it down. We're in this section. There's only one choice, and it's a tangent inverse. So I'm going to write the tangent inverse antiderivative form. So we have to turn 4x squared plus 4x plus 2 into the form a squared plus u squared, which of course would be the same as u squared plus a squared. So what we need to do is complete the square again. So let's complete the square here. I'm only going to focus on those two terms. So first thing, factor the 4 out. So go ahead and complete the square here. Shouldn't at the top when it says turn that into there, 4 parentheses x squared plus, shouldn't it be x? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Good thing is I didn't really pay attention to what I wrote, so <laughs> everything else I think is still okay. <laughs> All right, are there any complete the square questions? Just took half of the 1, well, the coefficient in front of x, which is 1. And square that guy, and then subtract 1 half squared. <clears throat> so 4 is 2 squared. And now I'm going to distribute the 2 inside. <laughs> so we're going to get 2x plus 1 squared plus 1. The reason I wrote 4 is 2 squared is because I'm about to multiply it inside of a squared term. So the property that I use here is, let's see, a to the b, c to the b is a c to the b power, like that. So in this case, b was 2. So I had to write that 4 is 2 squared, and then I can just multiply it inside, because they have the same power. All right, so any questions on this algebra right here? So you take the coefficient of x and divide it by 2 in the square? Um, what's that? So like, to when you went down from uh, 4 x squared plus x plus 2, and you went to the next step, you take the coefficient, divide by 2 to get the 1 half? Yeah, exactly. There's an invisible 1 in front of this x. So you're taking half of the 1, yeah. Take the half. And all this comes down to the uh, complete the square that we've been doing since pre-calculus 1 class. For some reason, it's a probably one of the most useful algebra skills and the least remembered as well. 
It's usually how it goes. I mean, there's plenty of useful algebra skills, but this is probably the most forgotten that's also useful. Okay. It works on quadratics. Yeah. It does not work on non-quadratics. So you can't, there is some stuff you can do for cubes, but it's way more complicated. And linear, I mean, there's XRD is appearing one time in a linear expression. Like what if your, uh, your number was by like an odd number instead of like, you know, sometimes you can make it like that. You can factor out any whatever coefficient of x squared you have. Like, like thing, like different Degree two polynomial is a quadratic, yeah. Okay. All right, we're ready. What is u? 2x plus 1, that is right. So figure out du. Uh, a in this case is just 1, that's really nice. So go ahead and find du and get the antiderivative. Uh, this is a a is one. one over a. Uh, That's the uh, the one over that guy right there. It's also on the secant. It is. Oh, I didn't write it down correctly. That's why you don't see it. So the sine inverse has no one over a part. The other two do. So what I recommend you do is look through your book with your formula page and basically make sure everything that's in a box or almost everything in a box in your textbook is on your formula page somewhere. Then you can double check because there's a chance I write something down wrong, which just happened. There's a pretty good chance you've written something down wrong, copied off the board wrong. So it'll be your chance to go back through. Um, probably takes four minutes or so for each section. We don't have that many sections. Uh, just make sure all your negatives are in the right spot, things like that. All right, so that's where our 1 over 1 came from. And just unsubstitute now. u is 2x plus 1. We get our little plus c at the end. that's the end of trig inverse trig functions and we're about to move into hyperbolic functions so all the trig functions they were based off the unit circle so we had a circle radius 1 and we basically looked at XY coordinates on that circle and our fundamental identity was you're on the unit circle so X squared plus Y squared equals 1 so that was pretty much where all of our trig came from right there so hyperbolic trig is not based off the circle. So the good old days, circle, point, <coughs> angle, I don't know why I'm writing that identity. I should have written the xy coordinates and then the identity. 
All right. So there's the good old days. Um, so these could be called circle. This is like circle trigonometry, unit circle trigonometry. Uh, hyperbolic trig. So you, regular trig was based off a circle. What type of graph do you think hyperbolic trigs are going to be based off of? Very good, hyperbolas. So we're gonna have a hyperbola, which is where all the trigs, all the hyperbolic trigs are based on. All right, and hyperbolic trig functions. I can look at my dog and my cat after class. Oh yeah, well, we can look at them now. Yeah. How do I minimize this thing? <coughs> Not what I want. Oh, we're in stupid tablet mode. There we go. Yup. They're best buddies. <laughs> Doesn't matter the gender. They're pets. Um, the age. He's two, and uh, the dog's two, and the cat's five-ish. No, four, five, somewhere in that range. They're both boys in this cross species. They're just friends. <laughs> All right, so I'm drawing a hyper hyperbola. If they give me my pen back. All right, it looks a lot like a parabola. The full hyperbola does have two sides to it, but we're only going to use one of the two sides, so I'm not gonna draw the left side. So, of course, it'll be points x, y. The graph, the equation this is a graph of is x squared minus y squared equals 1. So the only real difference between this and the unit circle is a plus change to a minus. That's pretty much the entire difference right there. So plus change to a minus, it has some serious implications, but, uh, and of course, we got cosine. Now we're going to use the letter u instead of theta. So we got cosine u is going to be the x-coordinate. Sine of u is the y-coordinate. Ah, what am I doing? These are hyperbolic cosine and uh, sine functions. So you can't spell them the same way. So hyperbolic cosine is cos with an h at the end. And you say these kind of like you say gosh. So this will be kosh, and sine with an H is pronounced cinch, like you do with your belt. Uh, so we got kosh and cinch. Uh, all right, now you should be wondering what in the world does U measure? Is there some weird angle going on? And there may be, but what we're gonna do instead uh, of worry about what u is on this graph. Wh I don't know what's going on. We're going to just write down the actual uh, functions of u for these two. So I'll write the definition here. So we'll start 